Hey everyone, this is Nitro. So since everybody enjoyed my last video, which was covering how to build Leaden, I thought I would do a video on Bozo, which everyone should have if they unlocked him through the previous event on Bozo himself, where as long as you got pretty far into the event, you got enough shards to unlock Bozo. In fact, he... Now, without further ado, let's get started and talk about Bozo. So first, let's talk about Bozo's talent. His talent is interesting. It replaces his intelligence value with 1.5 times his magic defense value. In addition, after you do damage to an enemy, there is a chance to apply a random debuff on the enemy that was damaged. And this effect uh, applies on area of, area of effect attacks. So basically, it means that Bozo is amazing at stacking debuffs on enemies, especially if you equip him with AoE attacks. Um, in terms of the percentage, I believe at 3 star, it's 50%, at 4 star, it's 60%, at 5 star, it's the current value, 80%, and then if you get him to 6 star, it's 100% to apply an additional debuff. So, that's Bozo's talent. It's amazing because it replaces his intelligence with magic defense value. Now, with that said, early on, it's not easy to get magic defense. So, early on, Bozo does struggle a bit to get enough intelligence to do a lot of damage. But by the level 55 or so stage, it's actually very, very easy to get his magic defense value up very high. And I'll talk about that uh, when I go over his equipment. So, let's now we've talked about his talent, let's talk about Bozo's classes. And this is the interesting thing. Uh, Bozo's classes, it's... His Death Lord line is actually very player versus player focused. It's amazing for World Arena because it gives access to Black Hole, which applies two debuffs. In addition, it gives you access to the Seal passive, which when you deal damage to enemies, there's a 50% chance to silence an enemy's active skills, and this lasts two turns. So, in other words, you have, let's say he throws a black hole and it hits all the enemies. His talent applies one debuff. Black hole applies two more debuffs. And seal has a chance to apply another debuff. So you're looking at four, up to four debuffs on all your, on all your enemies that got hit by black hole. Which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, so yeah, if you get seal, you get black hole, and then... You, uh, you get one of these skills, Earthquake or Dark Waltz, Bozo becomes a monster in uh, PvP. So, that's Bozo, uh, if you go down the Death Lord line. Generally speaking, if you go Death Lord, you should also get Dark Prince line as well. So that's his PvP build, where you get unlock both, his, uh, both of his uh, main faction lines, main class lines, I guess. Now, other than that, if you're mainly PvE focused, so you want to clear Time Rift, you want to clear Dragons, you can actually kind of ignore this line the way I have. I mean, I learned Reaper because I plan on getting Death Lord with my last Runestone, but I haven't got gathered enough materials to master this class yet. So I'm leaving my Bozo currently as the Dark Prince until I gather enough materials to master the Death Lord in one go. Uh, but moving on, if you're focused on PvE content, especially, let's say, killing the Ice Dragon, going down the Dark Prince line is perfect. And the reason for that is because the Dark Mage gives the Dark Reaper attack, and the Dark Reaper attack is brilliant for targeting uh, Ice Dragons. It, first of all, right, it ignores 30% of the enemy's magic defense, and it does 1.3 times damage. In addition, after the fight, you restore 50% of the damage you deal as hit points. It basically means as long as Bozo survives when he attacks a target, he'll heal back to full health. It's a great attack against the Ice Dragon, it's a great attack against almost any character in, uh, in PvE. Going down this line, when you hit Dark Prince, you get the faction buff for Dark characters. Okay? And that's, you know, plus 20% attack, plus 20% intelligence, plus 30% magic defense, which will also buff his intelligence significantly. So the faction buff is huge. Uh, it's very, very important for Bozo. 
and it's actually doubly so if you have other dark characters such as Lana in your party who would also benefit from the dark faction buff. So characters who fall into the dark faction, let's bring that up in the icon, they include Alte Muller, they include Bernhardt, they include Lana of course, and Bozel, and the other character that is commonly used would be Egbert. The last two, which is Sonya and Varna, neither character is used that often. I don't know anyone who's built up either of those two characters. But the other, the remaining four, the other four characters are very commonly used in parties. So that's an interesting note. Now, as an aside, this is going slightly off topic, but if you use the combo of Leon, Bernhard, and Bozel, the faction buff combo is great because Leon has the chivalry skill. And it's important to note that chivalry, first, it only lasts two turns, and second, it also provides a plus 30% attack value and plus 20% defense, but this bonus lasts two turns and does not stack with the faction buff. So, for example, if you use, if you don't have Bozel, let's say on turn one, you do a faction buff from Bernhardt, and then you do Leon's chivalry, Leon's Chivalry will overwrite, overwrite this faction buff from Bernhardt so that after two turns, after Leon does two attacks, he no longer has any buff. However, if you have Bozel, Bernhardt, and Leon, things change. What you can do is faction buff with Bozel, which benefits Bernhardt. Leon can use his Chivalry for the first two, tur first two attacks he makes, and only after he makes those first two attacks and the chivalry buff wears off, do you faction buff with Bernhardt. So by cycling that way, your Leon will always have, you know, a stat buff. As an interesting aside, in any PvE, PvP World Arena match that I play, and I've dropped these three characters in, in gold rank, uh, you, pl you put down six characters, and your enemy has the opportunity to ban one of your characters, my Bozel always gets banned because they know if they ban Bozel, then I they prevent me from having that combo buff. So that's just an interesting note. Uh, so that's Bozel. We've talked about his classes. If you and summed up, some put simply, if you want PVE, go down, go for Dark Prince. If you want PVP, then you'll go down Dark Prince, but also get Reaper and Death Lord. And as an aside, you can see that I also got the summoning, uh, summoner class for my Bozel. The reason for that is because if you haven't watched my, if you've watched some of my timer videos, you'll already know this. But I very frequently give him this summoning skill to grab treasures. Because this way, basically, it ends up being that Bozel creates a sixth character on the map, and that sixth character can run off to grab you the treasure while Bozel remains in the fight. Uh, it's just, it would, I just found it very convenient. You know, if you have an equipment set for Cherry and leveled her up, she's a flyer, she can really do the same thing that Bozel does without having to, I guess, waste a runestone. But I don't regret going down the summoner path because I just found it very useful for grabbing treasures. In any case, so that covers Bozel's classes as well as, uh, yeah, the classes you get for Bozel. So, let's talk about another unique aspect of Bozel. Bozel, he can actually fly. He only has three movement, but the character himself can fly. The limitation on that is all the soldiers he has access to from leveling up cannot fly. Right? His, uh, his Dark Mage, Dark Prince line gives him archers and lancers, neither of which can fly. His Reaper and Death Lord line gives him Demon Infantry and Mages. They can't fly either. Even his Summoner class, it gives an, it gives, a, what is it, a Bandit, Ambusher, as well as a Ballista, and none of those units can fly. But this is an interesting note. In the Training Ground, he can unlock the Sorceress unit. So we can quickly flip over to the Training Ground, and. In the Holy and Demon section, under Advanced Training 2, there is the Sorceress. When you unlock this unit, this Sorceress unit can fly. So what that means is, if you equip Bozel with Sorceress, and Sorceress is really the best unit for Bozel, he, 
he can start flying. Uh, he himself only has free movement, so flying for free movement is not that great. However, if you give Bozo speed boots, it increases his movement to 4. And with the sorceress having 5 movement, it means him as a unit can fly for 4 movement. And that makes Bozo really, really good. Now, we've talked about his soldiers. You just go for sorceress. We've talked about his classes. And we've talked about his talent. And so, let's talk about his equipment now. You can see the equipment I currently have on Bozo. Uh, Ghost Mask, SR. And it's mainly for the fact that it gives plus magic defense. And, uh, yeah. Plus... Up to plus 10% magic defense. So this makes it a great SR item for uh, Bozel. Speed boots are great for Bozel too. The mobility is huge, especially for PvE, for clearing things like Time Rift. Um, it gives hit points and magic defense, which is what he needs. In terms of the other two items, yeah, I, I strongly recommend just giving him level 20 SSR items. The reason for that is his weapon doesn't matter because his intelligence stat is replaced from by his talent. So just giving him a 20, level 20 uh, SSR is fine. And there's a lot of options for level 20 SSRs if you get them. Blue Moon is actually a free item. If you hit level 57, there's a world map event that uh, where the reward is a Blue Moon. It's one of those maps like this one, you know, with the demon icon and it's dangerous. And apparently it's very hard to clear. I'm not even level 57 my myself. But you do get a free blue moon. So just an interesting aside. But if you even get like any other random weapon, let's say a random staff, that's fine for Bozo too. Just level 20 is more than good enough. And the only reason you would equip it is for the hit point addition that it adds, as well as you know any skill that it may have, such as the blue moon giving plus magic defense. Armor. I gave him mine the Galaxy Cloak at level 20, which gives, again, plus magic defense and plus hit points. Galaxy Cloak, it's one of the better uh, Bozal armors. And, and it's in another interesting note, you get a free Galaxy Cloak. The one that appears, I bl from what I remember, I haven't gotten my free one yet either. Again, I got this one from fighting one of the dragons. But when you hit level 56, you can clear chapter 36. So I'm only on chapter 33 right now. But at chapter 36, the treasure there is a galaxy cloak. So you end up with... Yeah. So you end up with equipment that gives plus magic defense for free. And leaving these at level 20 is fine. Uh, I, this, In fact, this equipment setup is what I strongly recommend for any person, anybody who uses Bozo. Level 20 Blue Moon, level 20 Galaxy Cloak, level 50 Ghost Mask, and ideally level 50 Speed Boots. Mine are only level 40 right now, but my Bozol is already really, really powerful. Um, and the reason for that is because of his talent in the faction buff. So let's talk about that briefly. So you can see my Bozol has 238 magic defense, and he's getting an additional 107 from equipment. So the total of that is 345 okay faction buff the faction buff increases magic defense values by 30 percent so let's multiply 345 by 1.3 and that comes up to around 448 okay 448 magic defense and because of his talent his intelligence re is replaced by 1.5 times the magic defense value so let's multiply 448 by 1.5. That comes up to around 672 intelligence. I actually recall it being over 700, so there may have been some... I guess like the percentage boosts act slightly differently in that sense. But in any case, Bozal, with this equipment, with the faction buff, has around 700 intelligence. That's really, really high. And this is just for an equipment set of two level 20 they're just level 20 SSRs. And even the SR items are only level 40. They're not even level 50 yet. So once I max these ones out, I imagine his uh, intelligence would increase even further. 
maybe I'm hoping like 800 or so, which would be amazing. So with a low level equipment set, Bozo is a monster. And this is, it's because of his talent that my Bozo is able to beat uh, the Ice Dragon so easily. He just hammers the Ice Dragon apart. So that pretty much covers Bozo in a nutshell. I mean, you have, you know, if you're focused on PvE, just you need Dark Mage and Dark Prince. You know, unlocking these additional classes for their class mastery gives him some additional stats, which is always useful, but it's not absolutely required. In terms of equipment, I have a great equipment set for PvE for Bozo right now. And, you know, these things are easy to get, and these two are free. In terms of soldiers, it's Sorceress. So that's Bozol in a nutshell. Now, we've talked about Bozol in his current state, so let's finally talk about Bozol's final uh, equipment. The interesting thing about Bozol is his final equipment is actually completely player versus player focused. So, if you don't get his final set of equipment, and it doesn't matter if you don't do PvP. I'm just going to bring up a spreadsheet that has all the SSR items on it. And here we go. All right. So, first let's quickly cover actually I mentioned I could I'm using the blue moon right now, but you could actually use a lot of uh, weapons in the as an interim weapon for Bozal. For example, you can use now uh, you can use let's say purgatory because purgatory applies another debuff where the enemy takes two times in damage at the end of next turn. So this is actually fairly useful against uh, Anikis who can be affected by debuffs. It's, not, it's of no use of course against dragons who are immune to fixed damage. And it's not, it's also kind of useless against I guess uh, Anikki Valin because the Valin one has a has a skill that makes him immune to debuffs. Nonetheless, you know, you can use Purgatory. There's nothing wrong with using this weapon if you don't have Blue Moon yet. You can use, you know, Miracle Staff because, and in fact, Miracle Staff is the best uh, weapon for Bozal. It's because it gives additional AoE damage and it also has another chance to apply an additional debuff on enemies. So, in other words, you know, Bozal with Seal and Black Hole and his talent already apply up to 4 debuffs. T Miracle Staff can make it 5, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, you can even give him Goddess's Left Hand if you have one, because this has a 100% chance of reducing enemy's mobility by 2 blocks. You can give him the other 2 staffs, the Healer Staffs, Oliver's Staff and Mistletoe, because they also have chances to apply debuffs. You know, none of these are these other items, like Purgatory and the Healing Staffs, even the Blue Moon, they're not perfect equipment for Bozal, but they all work because, yeah, you're just using it for the additional uh, debuff that it can apply, or in the case of Blue Moon, additional magic defense. But at the end of the day, the best uh, weapon for Bozal is Miracle Staff, which adds additional AoE damage. Now, let's talk about armor. For Bozal, Galaxy Cloak, which you get free, is probably the second best item for Bozal because it adds magic defense and hit points to make him tougher. However, the absolute best one, and this is really more for uh, PvP, is Baldur's White Robe. Just like Galaxy Cloak, it gives additional magic defense. However, more importantly is that when you're attacked by melee units, uh, 20%, that's one-fifth of your units, will have no melee punishment. So if you're attacking the melee, Bozo will do a bit more damage back to the enemy in melee attacks. It's, a, it's only a slight difference from Galaxy Cloak, so, and it's, uh, in all honesty, it's really more of a PvP focus thing than a PvE thing. But, so if you don't get a Baldur's White Robe and you just stick with a Galaxy Cloak, it's perfectly fine. Let's talk about helmets. Helmet, um, 
The helmet that Bozo can use, and this is also free, I forgot to mention this, is the Dark Crown. You get a free Dark Crown in Time Rift 9-4. So we'll quickly move back to the game. Uh, and Time Rift 9-4 is actually unlocked right now. So if you go into the Time Rift, and you have access to World 9, this map right here, 9-4 normal, the treasure on it is a Dark Crown. Now, th with that said, the reason I'm not changing to it yet is because in order to level up a Dark Crown to level 50, you're going to need 3 Epic Martial Spirits. So it's quite a big commitment, right? You get a level 20 Dark Crown, then you have to level it up, put in 3 Epic Martial Spirits and bring it up to level 50. It's a big commitment, and I feel like there's other things that take higher priority than the Dark Crown. So I, would, I will probably use the Ghost Mask for a while before finally upgrading the Dark Crown to level 50. But you do, but just an interesting note, you get a free Dark Crown, which gives plus 10% uh, magic defense, just like the Ghost Mask, and it gives even more magic defense than this Ghost Mask does. But that is not the final equipment for Bozo. It's a, it's a great one, and it's, and it's really all you need for PvE. But if you want the absolute best P, uh, PvP equipment for Bozel, it is actually the Soul Stealer Headdress. And the reason for that is, just like the Dark Crown, it gives 10% magic defense value. More importantly, is that after taking action, it has a 50% chance to deactivate active skills of one enemy within three blocks. So, you know, we've talked about how Bozel is a debuff machine, right? He applies debuffs. Soul Stealer Headdress applies yet another debuff on an enemy within three blocks of him. And if you attacked with Bozel, there will always be an enemy within three blocks. So, yeah, I mean, it's a silence effect. If, if it kicks in in PvP, it can win you the match. Let's say it silenced the enemy Bozel after you made the move. Suddenly, their Bozo can't attack you with his with any skills. It can't use Black Hole, it can't Faction Buff. That can probably win you the match right there. So, Soul Stealer Headdress is his best uh, helm. F finally, let's talk about accessories. In fact, Speed Boot is probably his best PvE accessory. Yeah. Because it gives plus one movement. Making your Bozo have 4 movement is huge for PvE. You know, clearing a lot of the maps, they have a time limit. Getting that extra movement really, really helps. But if we're talking about player versus player, it's a different story. For player versus player, because the map is so small, the movement doesn't really matter that much. The plus 1 movement is pretty minor. Instead, the item you want for Bozo is the Veil of Light for PvP. And that's because it gives plus magic defense. The effect is plus hit points and plus magic defense, and the uh, secondary effect of the of the accessory is it gives immunity to defense and magic defense down. The most important part is the magic defense down because that way his intelligence will never go down. So your bozo will always do very very high damage in PvP. So with I guess that covers everything about bozo. Uh, you can see from you know what I just mentioned just now is that all of his end game equipment is really just PvP focused. If you don't do PvP, all of the equipment that he wants to equip can be gotten for free from just from playing the game, just like Ledin. Uh, you will get you will get a free blue moon. You will get a free galaxy cloak. You will get a free Dark Crown. I don't have mine yet, but you will get one. And finally, Speed Boots is great for PvE. So that's Bozol. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you can leave them in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer in the, to the best of my ability. And thanks for watching everyone. I hope this video was useful to you. Nitro out.